Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Jigyasa. We have already covered communication, types of communication, verbal, non-verbal. Apart from that written and oral communication, we have also discussed process of communication. We have also discussed various means of communications, seven C's of communications. Now today we will be discussing if you want to know any of the way, if you want to understand any of these topics, then the all the links will be in my description. You can go through the, them as well. Now today the topic which we are going to discuss is formal and informal communication. Now communication plays one of the important role in our uh, so in our life, right? And now what is formal communication? Formal communication means this communication which takes place in the organizations or we can say all those communications we also call it as official communications those communications which we are doing because of the professional attachment with some organization because we are in some specified designation and we are doing it is related with the authority of the authority of that specified position that is why we are doing that communication for example, say uh, one individual is a managing director, manager, marketing manager of an organization. He is giving instructions or he is giving some information or he is giving some uh, instructions to his sales individual sales people regarding any job that will be called as a formal communication. Any communication which we are doing because we are in one specified designation and that the authority that has been given to us by the organization that is why we are doing that communication and we are doing that communication because of that position that is called as a formal communication in that communication we have been certain authorities and responsibilities to fulfill that responsibilities we can delegate all those authorities to my subordinates that is why i am doing this communication because Organizations cannot work without communication. We have to give instructions to the subordinates. We have to give reports to the seniors. We have to do all meetings and all. These are all uh, types of communication. We have to communicate with the outside world as well. So when we are doing the communication because of one specific, because of my designation in one specified organization, that communication is called as a formal communication. Now, formal communication are of four types. Where one is the when uh, you can see in this diagram, there is this is the hierarchy in the organization. The communication from up to down and down to up. So this is when the communication flows from upward position to the downward position. That is called as downward communication. For example, if a senior managing director is giving instructions, information to the directors or directors giving information, instructions to the managers. That is called as downward communication. Now, when the uh, information flows from downward hierarchy to the upward hierarchy is called as upward communication. For example, if the um, marketing manager is taking reporting from his sales individual sales people that will be called as upward communication apart from that there is horizontal communication horizontal means in a straight line which means when we are communicating with the people who are at the same level in the organization for example the sales people have their meeting that will be called as a horizontal communication or if all the managing directors like managing director production managing director marketing managing director it managing director hr are doing some discussions that will be called as a horizontal communication which means in a straight line which means at the same level not upward and not down and this is called as horizontal communication now one the another fourth is horizontal uh, diagonal communication diagonal communication means when the communication um, is making a diagonal line right then that will be called as a diagonal communication for example hr manager is talking to 
some subordinates in the marketing in the sales department or in the production department regarding the requirement in the organization or regarding the needs of that specified job profile that will be called as a diagonal communication if some senior is talking if senior of one department is talking to the subordinate of other department if the subordinate of some other department is talking to the senior of some other department that will be called as a diagonal communication we are also called is called we also call it as crossword communication now what are the advantages of this uh, formal communication it flows in a systematic way or systematic flow of information we can say there is in the organization there is a specified hierarchy the information will go through that specified hierarchy only for example say if one employee has some concern with the, uh, with some people or concern in the organization or some grievances in the organization there is a specified he has to go to his senior or his superior regarding that information and he cannot go directly to some other upward authority for that particular concern or problem so it flows in a systematic manner or the information flows in a systematic way it do it always follow some specified flow of information it won't go in a haphazard way helps in fixation of authority which means ki it also whenever we give some work to some subordinates we have to give him some authority also so it fixes the authority when we communicate something to one individual that it, it is it is going through a specified channel then we say we can fix the authority of that specified individual as well. sources of communication can be easily located we can locate the who has given this information to whom from where this information is flowing in the organization so in case of formal communication we can we know the sources from which this communication is coming from next it facilitates managerial control basically in organization all these formal communication are taking place because of some controlling this is this also works as a controlling mechanism in the organization it also controls the organization it also helps in coordination of the organization it helps in facilitating the completion of the work in the organization so we say it is it also works as a controlling mechanism helps in coordination of activities and efforts because organization and organization there are so many people they are connected with each other each other if related to the organizational goal achievement of the organizational goal so they have to coordinate with each other unless and until they will not coordinate they uh, the or the organizational goal will not able to get complete for example we have a team they have been given a specified work now the team have to discuss with them coordinate with each and every team member which work is going which work is he, he is going to complete because if they have been given a specified task then they have to coordinate with each other so that they can cut down that that work in such a manner so that the work would get completed in a specified time so unless and until they will not co coordinate then maybe one maybe two or three individuals are doing the same work and few of the individuals are no the few of the work is not done by any individual so unless and until they will not coordinate they would not able to finish off with the task so formal communication helps in coordination of activities in the organization now what are the disadvantages of formal com in for formal communication it is a time consuming because the they always in the organization they have to follow a specified channel they cannot go in a haphazard way if i have some grievances i have to go to my senior and uh, i have to uh, he will try to solve that concern 
if he would not able to then he will go to his senior regarding the solution of that problem in this way we can say it will go in a specified hierarchy it will go in a systematic way so it at times it is time consuming lacks personal touch and involvement it also lacks personal touch and involvement because it is going through a channel a specified channel it is not directly going from one individual to the other individual maybe my problem is solved by the managing director only but i cannot go directly to the managing director i have to go give my concern i have to tell my concern to my seniors then my senior will go to his senior and then his senior will go to the uh, to his senior then the, in this way the personal touch lacks in the communication it is rigid and time bound which means that communication is not free we have to uh, it is time bound which means that I, if i have given a problem if, if i have communicated my problem to my senior it would be say if it is within 48 or 72 hours if he he would not able to solve my problem then only it will go to the next level not prior to that so that is why we say it is rigid and time bound it is not flexible it has a specified procedure only that is why it is time consuming also and it is time bound also only when that time will go if that time will get finished for example if my problem is with my superior i have to wait for 48 to 72 hours if he will not able to solve that problem then only it will go to the higher hierarchy and it is expensive as as well because it is why we say it is expensive because it is time consuming and it is consuming the time of the employees that is why we say it is expensive as well or at times we say we have to go through various uh, such channels which are expensive we also it is not that it is only with the organization at times say if i am sending some information to my client because i am related to that organization that communication will also come under formal communication right now we are coming to the informal communication informal communication means human beings are social human beings we are in one organization there is a formal communication and also there are some people whom they i like whom i can sit at the tea time at dinner time or at lunch time and we can gossip with each other regarding my profile regarding my personal life as well it can be it flows in all the direction it can be we have seen some movie we are discussing all those movies or if i am talking about my senior he is like this like this like this or he behaves like this and all so informal communication don't follows any formal line of communication it is a week in normal terms we call it as gossip because we are social human beings in the same organization there is a formal line of communication at the same time informal line of communication also works in which the main difference between formal line of communication and informal line of communication is that in case of formal communication we are we don't decide the individuals for example my boss i cannot decide my boss who will be my boss i cannot decide who will be my subordinates like that has been designated to me by the organization i have to communicate with them only regarding my work or regarding taking the reporting from them right in case of informal communication because we have many people around us in the organization so we can choose to whom who uh, which individual i can communicate in terms of my vibes are matching my this frequency is matching my view points are matching we can coordinate with them we can gossip with them we can sit with them at the at tea time at lunch time and we can communicate many things regarding the organization and our personal life as well that communication is called as informal communication because we are social human beings we socialize with people so in because of that this communication comes that is also called as grapevine communication and it spreads throughout the organization with its branches going out in all directions 
there is no direction upward communication downward horizontal vertical it goes in all the directions so that is that is called as an informal communication in which it is not necessary we choose the individuals according to our the we can say according to our likes and dislikes now what are the advantages of informal communication it happens in every organization it uh, it uh, it uh, is always in all the organizations we it go like formal communication and informal communication both go hand in hand they will always happen they will always there in the organization and there are many many, many communication which are we, which we are getting through formal channels and there are way many information which we are going getting through informal channels now what are the advantages of uh, informal communication it enables employees to develop friendly relations among them like they through with this communication our social needs will also get fulfilled we can develop friendly relations in the organization we have a formal channel and at the in the parallel we also develop some informal channel so that we can have friendly relations with some people to whom we feel, i feel or we feel that we can communicate or we feel that our frequency is matching our viewpoints are matching we can do gossip or we can share um, this our information personal life or professional life information with each other enables people to express their views it also enables people to express their views uh, not only for informal relations but in an informal way as well that is their personal views regarding some individual regarding the organization regarding some position fast and effective communication because there is no specified hierarchy it goes in all the directions so the information are going very fast and very effective satisfying the social needs of the workers we say we are a part of the society we live in a society and human beings are social animals so it also satisfies that social needs of the individual and it is flexible in terms of it do we don't have to follow any specified channel any specified like any formal channel to come in be is sitting next to me and we are gossiping with each other like a friend when during the lunch time but when we when the lunch time is over then again we come to that formal communication mode now what are the disadvantages in complete and inaccurate information see if some information is coming through a formal channel we cannot we have to rely on that information but if some communication is come coming through that informal channel we cannot fully uh, like uh, rely on that channel because we don't we will not get the source of that information that is why say we say ki this communication is incomplete and at times it come it is coming through various channels at times it may happen that that is the same information is coming through various individuals and it may change its meaning because every individual interprets it in his or her way and when finally it reaches you maybe it would have completely it is incomplete or it may have changed its meaning as well lack of authenticity and difficult to trace the source we cannot like we cannot make anyone responsible regarding this problem so we doubt the authenticity of this information and we also say ki it is difficult to trace from where this communication is developing so problems in fixing responsibility we cannot make anyone responsible for that communication if i am relying on some informal channels so we cannot make anyone responsible we cannot fix anyone responsible for this communication because it is coming from various channels it is coming from various individuals and we cannot determine its source because it is not coming through any specified channel leakage of confidential information at times it may happen in case of informal communication that important informations are going through this channel as well 
and information may be distorted. Distorted means it completely changes its meaning. If we say in case of oral communication, if it is coming from uh, different channels, if different people, for example, say it has developed from one individual and it is crossing 10 people. Maybe when the 10 people will get the information, the information, the meaning of the information is completely changed. That is why we say in case of informal communication, it information may be distorted. It is completely changed. It is completely just opposite of the, the which has been developed. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of formal coming, formal and informal communication. And the biggest difference is that in case of a formal communication, we don't, we cannot decide the individuals because that has been given to us by the organization, because of the organization structure. And in case of informal communication, we can decide all those individuals. We can, we can choose those individuals whom I like, whom like I feel they have the same viewpoints or they are matching with my frequency and we can communicate with them. We can make a group and we can communicate with them. It happens everywhere in the organization also, in the class also. We don't communicate with each and everyone. We are, do, we are communicating in a formal way with each and everyone. But when I want to gossip and when, when I want to discuss my viewpoints, then I have chosen say four or five people and I am sitting with them and gossiping with them. That is informal communication. Hope you would have understood this formal and informal communication. If you like this video, please subscribe, share and like. Thank you.